morning, everyone. Good morning. I need your help. I didn't even need to ask. You get it. Yeah, so just don't stop. Um, some people say a man is made out of mud. Poor man's made out of muscle and blood. Muscle and blood and a skin and bones and a mind that's weak and a back that's strong. You load to 16 tons, what do you get? Another day old and you're deep and dead. Saying to Peter, don't you call me, cause I can't go. I owe my soul to the company store. There you go. <laughs> I was born one morning when the sun did shine. I picked up my shovel and I walked to the mine. I loaded 16 tons of number nine coal and the straw boss said, well, bless my soul, you load of 16 tons, what do you get? Another day older and you're deeper in debt. Saying, Peter, don't you call me, cause I can't go. I owe my soul to the company store. Mm. <laughs> was born morn, morning, it was drizzling rain. Fighting in trouble, uh, my middle name. I was raised in the canebrake by an old mama lion. Ain't no high talking boss, so make me walk the line. You load to 16 tons, what do you get? Another day older and you're deeper in debt. Saint Peter, don't you call me, cause I can't go. I owe my soul to the company store. Don't stop now. Keep going. Let's, let's like really dig into it. Uh, jack, uh, jack, uh, jack. If you see me coming, better step aside. A lot of men didn't. A lot of men died. One fist of iron, the other of steel. If the right one don't get you, then the left one will. You load to 16 tons. What do you get? Another day older and you're deeper in death. St. Peter, don't you call me, cause I can't go. I owe my soul to the company store. Hey, all right. All right, thank you. Thank you. So, uh, let's. That song is called 16 Tons, written by Merle Travis. There should be a little video. The video cannot be loaded. Okay. So, Merle Travis, he's a guitar player. I think he was the son of miners, grew up probably West Virginia. Anyway, uh, he wrote that song about being a miner, a coal miner. But it was made popular by, oh, we're gonna refresh. Let's try this, we'll go to the next slide, see at the next slide. There we go. And it was popularized by a guy named Tennessee Ernie Ford. And uh, yeah, he's just, he was like a folk singer. Uh, and we're just going to keep on trucking. My name is Lucas Cheadle. I'm a musician. I'm a videographer. And most importantly, I'm a lover of music trivia. Don't get me started. I just love to talk about music. And so we're here to discuss rhythm and kind of my take on rhythm. Let's see what this definition says. Movement, fluctuation, or variation marked by regular occurrence. Okay, that's cool. But uh, rhythm, rhythm is, uh, I have a personal 
Well, first, are you a rhythmic being? Did, are you guys, do you feel like you're a rhythmic being? Do you? Yes. All right, good. So first of all, this is kind of a personal question and a thing. Where do you clap? So give me a, give me a, uh, I, I heard the answer. So this is a little test. We're gonna do a little experimentation. So I just wanna hear, where are you guys gonna clap? Where do you feel? like you would clap. Wow. You guys get it. I can go home. You got it. All right. So you guys passed the test. I, I am. So where do you clap? On the one and the three? Here, go ahead and play that beat again. That's on the one and the three. Two and four. It feels more natural on the two and four, doesn't it? Two and the four, yeah. So, you guys already get this though. See there's so one, two, three, four. Put the hand clap there. So, <laughs> I have a little story to tell. Uh, so, uh, I was at church, and there was some music going on, and uh, there was a drum beat going, give me that beat again. And everybody was clapping like this. And we were invited to, you know, get involved in the music, and everybody in the house is going like this. I'm a musician. I'm like, that's, something's wrong here. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> so I thought, no, you gotta clap on the two and the four. What's wrong with these people? So everybody, like, a hundred people are going. And I'm the only guy in the house going. <laughs> and then I started going like this. And my wife starts going like this. <laughs> what is wrong? You're a jerk. But can't you tell? These people don't know where to clap. So uh, I was kind of a jerk. I should have not put my hands in the air. And just, I should have just kept my hands down. Because, uh, well, here, let's back up a little bit. The two and the four, they call it the backbeat. And there are several reasons out there why it is called a backbeat. Go ahead and keep, give me that. Does anybody know what this instrument is? This drum? Snare. You guys, you guys are smart. It's the snare. So you're clapping with the snare. And perhaps the sound of the snare is whack. Whack, whack, whack. The whack beat, the back beat. That's one theory out there. But in the end, it really doesn't matter because check out where these people are clapping. Are they clapping on the one, two, three, four? I think they're clapping on all of them and in between. So it really doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter where you clap, in, in my opinion. But if you're gonna go against the grain, you don't have to show off and tell everybody that you're right because everybody's right. And when I pulled this clip, I couldn't help but pull this clip. Check out those moves.
I don't know, but I think James Brown was a flamenco fan. <laughs> Love James Brown. Okay, so where do you clap? It doesn't matter. Oh, trivia break. So in the jazz world, the start of a music gig is called the downbeat. Like for instance, I texted uh, Jeff Tay the other day. I said, so when is downbeat for uh, Creative Mornings? He's like, uh, eight o'clock. So, hey man, when's the downbeat? That's when, when does the gig start? So a little nugget for you. All right, rushing versus dragging. So rushing in musical terms is speeding up and pushing. And it's kind of more aggressive getting somewhere faster. Dragging is slowing down and laying back. So here's an example of the most amazing laid back groove I've ever heard in my life. Are you guys familiar with D'Angelo? So laid back. should start to fade. There you go. So the drummer is Quest Love. You guys familiar with Quest Love? Yeah, Jimmy Fallon show. There's a great video out of where he's talking about the producer, Jay Dilla, directing him, producing him on this album. And Quest, well, watch the video for yourselves. And it's this Jay Dilla guy. He really revolutionized the neo soul and the laid back groove. Now here's an example of pushing or rushing. But this, in this next example, listen to the vocals because they sort of counter the rushing with a s slow, drawn out romantic, which I think is really cool. This is Russian. Oh, they're pushing the beat there, huh? They're kind of like, no, 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 no. Okay, so. All right, before we get to this trivia break, yeah, we got time to do this. We're going to experiment. Let's see, you guys already know about the two and the four of the backbeat. You got that in your hands. So let's, uh, give me a beat with no, with no snare. All right, so you guys add the backbeat. Nice. Can you, uh, let's try and push it. It's kind of hard. Nice. All right, let's try to lay it back as back as you can get. All right, that's good. It's subtle. It's subtle, but it's real. Trivia break. A five, six, seven, eight. That's not how musicians count in music. That's how dancers count in dance. Because dance is usually based on an eight step, uh, eight step dance combination. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, dance, da, da. I, So with music, it's four. One, two, a one, two, three, four. So there's this great film called Whiplash. Anybody seen Whiplash? Yeah. So great. 
love that film. I've actually, I actually played a lot of uh, big band music. Man, they get, it, they get it right. Such a great movie. There's one weird thing, though. There's one really weird thing. Is the, the, uh, the band director always counts a five, six, seven, eight. And when I first heard that in the movie, I thought, What's, what, is, what is happening here? I don't know why they did that. But it shouldn't detract from what an outstanding film it is. But it's the weirdest thing. So when you go back and you watch Whiplash, just go, uh, there. He's not counting in dancers. That's a big band. All right. So where are we at now? Oh, boy. Polyrhythm. OK. Polyrhythm. The simultaneous combination of contrasting rhythms and music. OK. My favorite teacher in high school, English teacher, he said, show, don't tell. So I don't have much to say about polyrhythm. I just have an example to show you. Hemiola, basic, basic polyrhythm known as three over two. It's two rhythms on top of each other that uh, they always meet at the one. So. There we go. So this is uh, something I do when I'm just sitting around. Here, let me do it on my, let me do it on my thighs first. This is, it's hard to do in the morning. Wah. Just give me a second here. <laughs> There it is. That's the three, and here's the two. One, two, one. All right. Let's try this. So you do the, uh, you do it. One, two, one, two, one, two. <laughs> One, two, three. All right, so I was going to have you guys do that uh, to clap, but I think um, it's too early in the morning. Anyway, so the idea is you have three over two, which you know, you would think that, well, what, how, how does that work together? But it just does, because it always comes back around to the one and meets up. And uh, I have this great, here's an example of probably the most amazing polyrhythm that we all know and experience. Because there's three different elements at work here. You have the moon, the sun, and the earth. And then they always meet up at a full moon. But you have three different cycles, three different rhythms that have their own independent timing. And it's beautiful. I just love that. So in my humble opinion, One, uh, two and four, maybe somebody else's one and three, but just be true to your rhythm because diverse combinations can make magic. Rushing and dragging creates tension, but tension is not bad. It's actually a good thing. It adds flavor and character to whatever you're doing. And uh, I think that we can agree that we live in a polyrhythmic world you, mind your, you may find yourself going against the rhythm and out of sync with the world. And, uh, you know, just embrace the rhythm that you find yourself in. And uh, that's it. Thank you very much.